All right. And it looks like we are live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome back to the Daily Digital. I am your host, Junior. And today is July the 13th, 2022. Uh, and we've got four new things to talk about here today. The first one just being a little bit about cryptocurrency um, and what you should be doing in regards to your taxes. A lot of people have gotten for the first time into cryptocurrency last year, 2021. So I just want to get you guys aware of what you start thinking about here now um, because tax season is just right around the corner. We're just now in the third quarter of 2022. Um, so the end of the year will be here just before we know it. And I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of what you should be thinking about before jumping into tax season. Uh, the next one after that is about real estate and how the NFT market has been playing a role into real estate. Uh, we also have one in regards to how the metaverse is changing over into a real life matrix. And then the last one is all about how artificial intelligence uh, is changing the way that we work out. So stay tuned and we'll jump right into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So the first one that we have here today is all about your cryptocurrency and taxes. Uh, I just found this article pretty interesting. Again, we're six months into the year, which means we only have about six months left until tax season. And a lot of people have been making a lot of money on their cryptocurrency. Um, I'm not sure what you guys been doing with it, but if you haven't put aside anything for taxes uh, in regards to the profits that you made, you may want to start thinking about that. Um, and here are just a few other things as well in which uh, this article talks about seven things to know about IRS tax treatment of cryptocurrency in 2022. Um, so the first one, and I'm not going to go through all of them here. Again, I'm going to just leave the link to all of this inside the description for the YouTube video. And you guys can feel free to dive a little bit deeper into it. But the first one here states that cryptocurrencies are treated like property by the IRS. Uh, the IRS rather than regular currency that means um, that means as far as the IRS is concerned your bitcoins are more like stocks or real estate than paper money treating cryptocurrency like an asset changes how the asset is taxed by the IRS most states have yet to issue in any guidance or rules regarding cryptocurrency taxation so it'll be interesting to see how states re, uh, react to this um, if they have already, when did this article even come out? April 10, 2022. So maybe maybe there's more articles out. Um, this is just one I found that was very informative. I like bulleted, 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 <laughs> bulleted information uh, makes it easier to capture everything. Uh, but number two, cryptocurrency gains can be taxable. Cryptocurrency itself is not taxable by the IRS, but if you do buy cryptocurrency that gains value and sell the cryptocurrency to realize a capital gain that then that gain your profit can be taxed notably even buying something anything using cryptocurrency can trigger a taxable event uh, one thing that i do want to mention about this is that in recent days i've heard that um, the irs is now going to start taxing unrealized gains uh, unrealized gains are just basically when you have an asset say for example a stock that increased in value um, on paper yes of course you made a profit but you didn't actually see those profits you didn't realize those profits because you never sold the asset um, but now the IRS plans to go ahead and tax you on those unrealized gains so even if you see a profit and you don't actually get the paper money for it they're gonna start taxing you on it so just keep that in mind as well uh, not sure if that plays um, uh, it's not sure that falls in the same line with cryptocurrency, but I do not know that falls in line with stocks. Uh, cryptocurrency taxes vary based on your holding period. Uh, number four, crypto income must be tracked and reported, of course. Number five, buying and holding cryptocurrency is generally not taxable. Um, simply owning cryptocurrency is not generally taxable if you buy and hold, if you buy and only hold your cryptocurrency, whether in a tax event advantage or taxable uh, retirement account that cryptocurrency is not taxed the taxable event occurs at the time of the cryptocurrency sale again they only tax it when you sell it so that you can see those profits 
But again, you might want to just dive into a little bit into unrealized gains and see how that plays a role into uh, cryptocurrency as well. Crypto IRAs can confer tax advantages. And then lastly, number seven, you can potentially pay your taxes in cryptocurrency, which would be awesome in my opinion. Alrighty. So the next thing here is fitness workouts are no longer going to be done inside the gym. Just kidding. Uh, with the rise of the pandemic, coronavirus, everything kind of shifted to at home. Uh, and I guess one company actually came out with their own at home personal trainer, which is done by artificial intelligence. So the company starts with an A. Altis. The company Altis has a sound bar shaped device. Uh, that is actually an artificially intelligent personal trainer, which can actually go through um, as you're doing your workout. It can tell you if your form is incorrect. Uh, it can tell you a whole bunch of stuff. Let me, matter of fact, I'm gonna. I love playing the videos because I explain it way better than I can. Altis sees you. Altis hears you. Altis. Start. Altis is the world's first AI personal trainer and it customizes workouts just for you. Three, two, one, let's go. Reach with your back leg so that your body forms a straight line from your head to your heel. Altis not only corrects your movements in real time, but intelligently modifies your exercises to help you avoid injury. Instead of that exercise, let's try incline push-ups. And detects velocity and speed and helps you reach your maximum potential. Get ready for a new PR. Altus coaches your every move. The future of fitness is finally here. All right, so what do you guys think about that? I'm really curious to know, um, especially those fitness gurus out there, um, personal trainers, of course. I hope uh, you don't get too scared by this and think this, you know, new artificial intelligence is going to, you know, take your jobs or anything like that. Uh, in my opinion, there is a lot, lot, lot of difference between having a uh, computer tell you what to do and a computer tell you, you know, a whole bunch of stuff versus having to build a relationship with a real human being. Um, but again, if anything ever happens, the pandemic, you know, personal trainers, they, they, couldn't go to people's homes uh, and actually train them. So this is just a new way of um, approaching fitness, especially for some people who you know may not have as much time to get outside of the house as much. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I see it can go both ways. Um, in my opinion, this piece of technology is actually pretty cool. Um, something that I would actually use. I don't think would actually uh, purchase it because I'm not a stay at home all the time type of person. I would rather go out to the gym and, and speak to a human being and stuff like that. But it'd be interesting to see how many people actually do take it on. All right. And so the next thing here is real estate. Uh, as we all know, NFTs are on the rise. Um, but one thing that two companies actually have now, uh, I'm pretty sure there's a couple of them as well. Uh, but two companies have actually started to sell houses, actual real physical houses like in the States, Florida, New York, Texas, California, stuff like that. And then they go ahead and sell them as an NFT. Now, this usually confuses people because everybody thinks that an NFT is just a JPEG image of artwork. But what an uh, NFT actually is, is just a digital contract usually called a smart contract that states what happens with an asset. Um, so in that case, uh, a company called Housebit are considering these homes as assets and then selling the contracts or the deeds to these homes as NFTs. And they're actually taking it one step further because they, um, uh, where is it at here? They actually add another aspect to it to where um, people, you know, anybody can actually own a piece of the property as well, not just the home owner, the one that's occupying the home. Uh, so they call these ownership tokens. And I believe for every house, they actually send out 1,000 uh, ownership tokens or they sell 1,000 ownership tokens to an asset. And then what they also do is that they create a occupancy token as a NFT, which is, you know, different from just a ownership token. 
Uh, the NFT is non-fungible, so there's only one of them, meaning that only one person can occupy the home. And so therefore, that occupancy token um, basically says who actually is going to live in it. So for example, if you're in the real estate and you have a rental property, then you can own basically uh, all 1,000 of these ownership tokens, but then you can transfer over that NFT over to anybody. So as soon as somebody wants to move in, you transfer the NFT to them. Um, that digital wallet um, NFT could uh, attach to like a keypad on the door. It will unlock the door every single time. Um, of course, as long as technology holds up. But from there, once they move out, you can just get that NFT back from them or you can go ahead and just create a new NFT, mint one on the blockchain, um, basically remove the aspect of that one into the home and then uh, allow anyone else to purchase that. Um, the neat thing about this is that these, these are no longer just a month to month contract. These NFTs are now becoming more of an asset. And so the second company here uh, that I actually found quite a while ago before I found Housebit is a company called Proppy. And Proppy essentially does the same exact thing. Um, they make home buying a whole lot more secure, a whole lot more quicker, a whole lot more easier by doing everything on the blockchain. So you would essentially have no need to have a uh, middleman, a third party bank or anything like that. Uh, everything can happen on the blockchain. Uh, you can buy and sell homes via bank transfers, it looks like, buy and sell homes using crypto or buy and sell a home as an NFT. Um, how do they make this happen? Field offers with ease, transact seamlessly. Uh, I'm not going to go too much in depth with all of this, but again, here's actual real, uh, real life properties that you can buy with cryptocurrency in Colorado, California, um, New York, and I have a bunch of other properties as well. Uh, so I definitely think you guys should look into this. Uh, this is one of the neat and cool aspects of NFTs um, that has been going around recently is that you um, can take that NFT contract, not just digital art, the NFT contract, and apply it to essentially anything. So any digital item uh, or asset and any physical item or aspect uh, or asset as well. All right. And so the last thing here that we have, which is... Um, is, is, is getting pretty, it's getting pretty creepy. It's getting pretty crazy out here. DNA is now going to start being used within the metaverse. So if you've ever seen the movie Avatar, uh, if you've ever seen the show Black Mirror, if you've ever seen The Matrix, uh, now this company, I don't know if they're called DNA Verse, but this website DNAverse.io are now um, allowing you to customize your NFTs with actual real DNA data. Um, no, I don't believe you have to send them a blood sample or, or anything like that. But what they're going to be doing is actually allowing you um, to merge yourself with your digital avatars or to merge yourself um, with other aspects inside the metaverse. So if I want to read here, DNA is what makes you unique from the other 7 billion people on Earth. You are a one of one art piece the day that you were born, which is 100 percent correct. Uh, everyone is unique. Everyone has um, some unique aspect about them um, from head to toe. Uh, and now in DNA verse, you are or you can immortalize your uniqueness in an NFT art piece with complete scientific accuracy. This simple act of introducing your genetics into a <clears throat> NFT art piece can evolve in many ways from verifying humans against AIs in digital worlds or personalizing or personalizing digital assets with your true essence to merge biological data and structures into digital avatars like James Cameron and Vision uh, in the movie Avatar or by transferring our consciousness into Web3 like the San Junipero episode in Black Mirror. Um, however, before that, the genesis of life has to start somewhere. If proteins are the most important molecules in life, crypto proteins will be the genesis drop of human life inside the metaverse the first step to build the primal community will uh, who will rule the replication breeding process and the entire dna verse um wow so that's a lot to unpack there again what they're doing is basically just taking these what they call crypto proteins 
and making that the start of everything. Uh, there is a limited amount of the crypto proteins, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, here it goes. So after the Genesis drop, the drop will take place. A total of 3,200 DNA passes will be done. Even though there's 7 billion people in the world, what will happen after that? Each new human being who, who wants to immortalize their DNA will have to use the replication breeding process, uh, a decentralized economic model focused on the sustainability of the community and the project. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really, really curious about how this is all going to play out again. All this technology is pretty cool, but at the same time, it's like, man, do I really want my quote unquote DNA to be attached to some digital avatar or, uh, attached to the blockchain and, and all this other stuff? Um, me personally, I would say no, but I would like to see where this actually goes how it actually plays a role in other aspects of the world. Uh, I know there are some people out here who uh, take care of animals that have passed away uh, or passed on and they go ahead and stuff them and then they keep them. Uh, what if now you can take your animal that has passed on, um, use their DNA and then put it inside the metaverse. So whenever you enter the metaverse through virtual reality, whatever, that animal is still there with you. I mean, think about it again. Once you lay down the groundwork, the foundation of all of this technology, it's a whole different ball game um, versus, you know, one thing you can just put tunnel vision on and see for what it is. Or you can, you know, broaden your horizons a little bit and then, you know, make it to what you want or, you know, think about something different about it. Um, so, yeah, so that will be all it for today. I uh, definitely appreciate everybody's time checking this out. Definitely let me know what you think about any of this. Um, check the links in the bio if you want to know more information feel free to reach out to me at all my social media handles uh, and until next time you guys take care